This recipe is a real favorite in our house and it's a spicy chicken wrap with some mango. Absolutely full of flavor. I'm gonna show you how to do the goujons in a moment. We're gonna do the crumbs, a lovely little uh, kind of like marinated tomatoes, mango and a pesto mayonnaise. So there's a lot of this um, elements that can be made ahead, which is perfect. So let me explain what I have in the blender. I have some of the Simply Better Giabata, better Giabata crumbs, excuse me, from Mr. Crumb. And then I also have to give it really nice texture. And these are dried breadcrumbs, they're called panko. We use them in the restaurant. So I've half and half in the food processor. If you can't get them, just the regular Giabata crumbs are perfect. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put in some parsley. I'm gonna let the food processor do all the work. So I'm gonna put stalks and all in. So this is the flat leaf parsley in here. I'm gonna to talk to you about two spices. These are two of my favorite spices, the turmeric and the mild curry spice. They're all organic and uh, they're from Oco. They're based in Athlone. So we're gonna put in two spoonfuls of the turmeric. And I like that they're in small quantities. So you don't have to buy huge amounts. So I've used this a lot, the turmeric and the curry powder in my curry recipe with sweet potato chickpeas. If you follow me on Instagram or social media, you'll see it. Definitely one of the most popular recipes I've ever done. So this is a very mild curry powder. If you like this spicy, you could put in, I'm putting in three spoonfuls of this, maybe one more for luck, uh, but you could put in some chili powder or you could put in some of the harissa spice. So if you do like it spicy, absolutely. I'm gonna blend this for a moment and then I'm gonna throw in these lovely sesame seeds because if I put them in now, they're going to lose, um, they're going to break up and I don't want that. So I'll just put them in at the last minute. So using the blender, This just chops the parsley, but just really distributes the spices through the crumbs. Now I'm gonna throw in then the sesame seeds and I'm literally going to, and that's it. I don't want to over blend it. These crumbs are brilliant because they'll keep for about two to three weeks uh, in an airtight container in your fridge and you can freeze them. So we'll have a little look at them now. So just empty them all out. You're going to get a lovely colour, lovely flavour there. So remember the Giabata crumbs and then the panko crumbs, which give really, really good texture. So we're going to show you the technique, or I'm going to show you the technique of pane. Um, I'm just going to heat my pan. So a pane means, everyone, flour, egg and breadcrumb. So first of all, I'm going to heat my pan low. I'm going to put in plenty of rapeseed oil. It's a really good oil to use because you have a high smoke temperature. And when you do a panne, everyone, you season up, first of all, with some sea salt, the flour. So this is plain flour here. And then I have some of the Simply Better corn fed eggs, two eggs, a little bit of milk, just blended. So that's an egg wash and then our breadcrumbs. So let me talk to you about the chicken. These are the, mi the mini chicken fillets, okay? So they're corn fed, quality assured, they're produced in Cavan, and the farmer here is in, from County Monaghan. So it's a very, very good uh, local product and it's, fed and maize, remember that, that's what gives it the most beautiful flavour. These are the little fillets, this is a full pack that I've already opened up. Now when I do this, I'm going to be honest with you, I'd probably get two or three packets, I do this in batches and then I put some of the chicken into the freezer. So I'll show you the tip as I'm doing this in a moment. I'm a big believer in making things as simple as possible. Uh, I'm using chicken, you could use maybe some whiting, some haddock, some hake, flour egg or breadcrumb, those crumbs are delicious, so they are, even if you're making potato croquettes. So this is the little mini chicken fillet. So you're gonna put one hand into the flour, and then one hand goes into the egg wash. And then you just mix this. So the egg wash is really important because it will help the um, breadcrumbs obviously stick. So the flour seals in the chicken. Uh, I'll do a couple more and then we'll just roll them so we will into this. So try and pick a nice big dish. So flour, egg, milk, uh, two eggs, a little bit of milk, and then we have our breadcrumbs. So see the way I'm doing all the flour first of all. So may as well just do them all and then I can show you. So that's a full packet of the mini fillets that I've used there. And after I finish this video, I'll do the other ones and I can keep them in the fridge. They'll keep for three or four days, uh, probably three days is best. And uh, you can freeze them so you can make them ahead. So they're great if you want chicken goujon. So I'll just move that out of the way. So now, this is a real tip for you, or a good tip for you. So you keep one hand kind of wet and one hand dry. So that's our egg wash there. Just kind of gently press that. And that's one of your lovely little kind of strips, the goujons, the little mini fillets. So see the way I'm doing that? I'm kind of gently patting it, shaking it over. The herd that I've used is some parsley, flatly parsley. You can use curly, it doesn't matter. That's what we have here at home. 
but uh, you could use basil you could use coriander and again if you want it spicy do put in some chili uh, powder if you do like it spicy so this is really important see what i'm doing here with the the kitchen paper so that's the way i would store them in the fridge and also in the freezer and then you label them and you date them okay so that's really really important can you cook them from frozen yes i tend to take them out of the fr freezer excuse me and defrost them in the fridge so we're just going to gently just do this the pan is nice and hot i don't want it too hot so i'll just take that off for a moment because what will happen it'll burn the breadcrumbs and they won't take long to cook trust me so we'll put on a few of these and we'll put a little bit of butter into the pan you know me and the butter and remember with the breadcrumbs it's going to absorb a lot of this oil so you can freeze these breadcrumbs because you've had raw chicken in it and they'll keep for three to four days so just make a note of that so that's the spicy crumbs i would probably say goodbye to the egg wash so i'll just move that out of the way just while i'm over here i'm going to wash my hands in one moment we're going to put on our chicken onto the pan so just melt in the butter so rapeseed oil and butter so this is still kind of wet here so i'll do three or four of these and then we wash our hands really important food hygiene how you store you know your food washing your hands so important so i'll put four onto the pan you don't need four for this probably two will be enough for one wrap so remember cover that with cling film keep it in the fridge and it keeps absolutely no problem at all so wash your hands really really well and you can freeze those uh, goujons so you can perfectly now turn up the pan so we're going to do our little marinated tomatoes prepare our mango and just get our wrap ready so i've turned up the pan a little bit just to get the cooking process i don't want them to uh, brown too much because they will burn so we'll do our mango in a moment first of all i'm going to show you a lovely little garnish for some tomatoes so these are some irish growing cherry tomatoes we're going to put some rapeseed oil we're going to put a little splash of balsamic vinegar because i love this so i do so that's the balsamic it's a three-year-old balsamic we're going to grate a little bit of lemon zest i tend to do this a lot so i'll just use this grater here okay throw your eye over the pan really important because we don't want them to burn they will burn if you have it too high so i've reduced the heat you start off in a hot pan and i forgot to say that the oil stops the butter from burning because butter doesn't have a high smoke temperature now what works really well with that is a little bit of basil let's have a little look at our chicken so if you want to you can put basil into the tomatoes no a bit more color now that's good so if we just have a little look here it's beginning to brown perfectly it's still raw in the center but i love that golden brown color and the butter will give the most beautiful flavor so if you do this just with butter it will burn so do use the rapeseed oil you get a higher smoke temperature okay uh, a little bit of um some sea salt a touch of pepper and then behind me i have some lovely fresh basil i'm going to put that in there so the pan is on low you can use coriander of coriander here or basil whichever one i'll just pick a little bit of basil which i really like and then we're going to put that into our tomatoes it's one of my favorite herbs not an easy one to grow but it is a beautiful herb because you need a lot of uh, warmth and moisture so just cut this into little strips here now see the tomatoes i've done this can be made ahead which is great so that's that there ready to go seasoned with salt and pepper and that's that ready to go now just going to wipe here in front of me just keep a little eye i might turn it down to a lower ring because i can cook so when do you know when your chicken is cooked i'm going to show you so if you press into the center of the chicken that still feels very soft particularly that one is quite thick so as it is um as it's cooking it's going to obviously uh, cook through it's going to firm up now i'm turning these over again if you just look and they're getting to the most beautiful color if you don't want to pan fry them you can bake them off in the oven so if i was doing this in the oven it'd be about 180 and it'll take about 12 to 14 minutes but trust me doing them like this it's definitely nicer flavor okay we're going to do our mango next and then we'll do a little pesto mayonnaise and then we'll serve it up so i forgot to show you just what we're looking for with mango so when it's nice and soft and right when it's ripe it should be nice and soft not too soft not too firm if it's a little bit hard what i would do is i would leave it uh, to, uh, to ripen in a warm kitchen so before i do this i'm just going to check in the chicken this one here needs another little minute i'll flip them over again and you can see like it's nearly absorbed all that um all the butter and all the oil and what i like to do is just let that sit there now it'll finish off on the pan but i'm going to put it onto some kitchen paper 
so it's still cooking away the heat of the pan will cook it through and because those little mini fillets they don't take long at all okay we're going to cut this nice and long you can peel it with a potato peeler but i'm just using my knife here so just remove this any of the skin trim it and the mango gives gorgeous freshness sometimes when i do this i put a little squeeze of um lime into it it works really really well so it does so slice this nice and thinly and that's our mango done there you can see that we bit a lime if you want to but i think there's enough with the with the basil and the lemon zest in that there's definitely enough okay a little bit of pesto mayonnaise this is just some regular shop bought mayonnaise we're going to put in some of this lovely simply better pesto i'm a big fan of this you've seen me lose using it in lots and it's a fresh product so it's usually uh, kept in the fridge so it is really really good with pasta so about three teaspoonfuls of that this pesto uh, mayonnaise can be made ahead so your tomatoes they'll keep for two or three days in the fridge as long as you don't put salt into them i think salt draws out the water so you can just have the the vinegar the oil and the basil and the the lemon zest if you want to so that's our little mayonnaise that's it simple as that okay so we're going to serve up we're going to get these wraps so this is an irish company Fitzgeralds. you'll get these really really nice company so i'm going to use one of the bigger wraps obviously you can get smaller ones for kids so these are just the plain wraps that i'm using you can get ones with seeds it's up to you i've used lots of them so i have that chicken is perfectly cooked it's firm to the touch so the first thing we're going to do is with our mayonnaise just with the spoon we're going to sm spread this all over or smear it you can use a palette knife but then you're dirty in another product now i like the salad i like for this is this lovely baby gem and this is grown in ireland known as cos so we're going to put this and this gives great crunch to it you can use rocket but i think this is a better salad to use now we put our mango so the mango goes next two or three pieces probably three i have three done there should one more for luck we won't waste it and then our tomatoes and look how good they look with the vinegar honestly try these and this is lovely even with some goat's cheese it's a really fresh it's so full of flavor and this could be an absolutely delicious delicious uh, wrap you know for you know when the children go back to school you can have these already made the goujons and then just simply warm them up if you want to now here's the fun part wrapping this so we have a layer of pesto uh, mayonnaise we have that lovely cause you have the spicy chicken and they can be done ahead and then we just literally wrap this nice and tight as tight as you can okay really nice and tight so i'm going to leave that just there for a moment i'm going to cut it in a minute we're going to serve this with a little bit of salad a couple more tomatoes i do love salad uh, this is actually lovely if you want to with some you know sweet potato wedges or even some chips now i'm using the oil and the vinegar to dress the salad so we're wasting nothing so you have your tomatoes just cut in half and the cherry tomatoes are much nicer to use so i'll move that there just using my knife i'm just going to cut this at an angle where i can show you this and then you can see that lovely tomato the chicken excuse me it's lovely and moist and succulent can you see that so that is a really really delicious trust me you won't be you won't be hungry after this i'll turn it around here where you can see it so you can see that lovely layers the wonderful moist chicken you have the mango you have that crunchy salad the tomatoes too are delicious and that mayonnaise and that wrap and i think that's that's definitely one of our favorites so it is so the key into this is really good quality chicken a lovely fresh salad and a lovely kind of combination of flavors uh, try and get that corn fed chicken it's delicious so it is and you can do it in batches and you can pop it into the fridge or the freezer so you can get ahead of yourselves so when i'm finished now i'm going to use that chicken flour egg or breadcrumb onto the tray uh, into the fridge or freezer and we'll be enjoying that over the next couple of days so happy cooking and enjoy this delicious spicy chicken and mango wrap